It's such a privilege to have Alice Achan right here in our studio. Alice, you've been talking to us from a month ago, less than a month ago, just end of October. Uh, seven years, seven years you've been helping to make a difference from the ground up in your homeland. Yes, I've been in this mission for about seven years now, uh, carrying the Christian ministry and uh, rebuilding the lives of the community that have been in the war for the last 20 years. And I feel so privileged to be partners with Crossroad Ministry. Alice, uh, when, when, a, when a young girl comes under your care, she's, uh, she's been uh, liberated from sexual slavery, essentially, right? Uh, yes. With, uh, she was pressed into that by the uh, Lord's Resistance Army. Um, I'm interested in knowing that it's the Ugandan army who have uh, freed these girls. How did they make the connection with you? We, the, the Uganda army and the government of Uganda recognize that we provide Christian counseling fellowship. And when these girls are rescued, they are always handed over to us. They know, they look for us, they bring the girls to us, to our center. Or when they don't have transport, they call us and we go and pick uh, the kids, the girls from the, from the, the military barracks. What's, what's the, the number one challenge when a girl comes to you for day one? She's just been liberated. Uh, she maybe has a baby. She's maybe HIV positive. She has all these horrible memories. Uh, wh what do you do to begin to incorporate her into your care? I think the most important thing is the, the, the time when the girl arrived in our center, they are totally in great fear and they, they don't know really what is going to happen next because of what they have seen through and how they have come in our center. They have been in the hand of the, 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 the rebels and they are transferred in the hand of the military and the military hand, us in the, hand them in our center. Sometimes they feel there's mistrust because from the military into mm. the civilian life is something which is very difficult. But when the girl reach in our center, we really welcome them with love, care, and we show them that this is the place that we, they are welcome. And this helps us really to bridge, to bridge the gap of that mistrust. And uh, the social workers, the Christian social workers that we have, they're really so lovely. And they give all the care and you know, support to the girls that they need. But the most important thing is their health condition is yeah. really terrible. You can imagine the child has been born and he has never visited the medical, uh, medical center. A pregnant girl has not seen a doctor for antenatal care and has always put most of them at risk. So what we do immediately, make sure that we access, they access medical treatment. But of course, we give a lot of counseling and prayers. It's something that they love so much. It must be another world well, yeah, really. when they come into this. Yeah. Yeah. Safe, loving environment, yeah. nurturing, yeah, really. restoring. Do, do you test them for HIV? Yeah, we test them for HIV AIDS and um, quite a number of HIV AIDS are positive and that's another thing that we deal with because it's something we don't want to rush in immediately, we give them to settle. Yeah. Imagine somebody has been in the hands of the brutal rebels and they're coming out and to discover that they're HIV AIDS positive, it's something which is so painful. Mm. But of course we have to declare and we make sure that they begin getting treatment. Different so virus. yeah, we have a quite, I think, after about, let me say, 2% of our beneficiaries are HIV. How many girls are we talking about here? We're talking about uh, 500 girls. 500, yeah. 500. Yeah. So Dave, what, what has Crossroads been doing to, to help Alice? Well, what we've been doing is, first of all, equipping some of the home-based care workers that go into the IDP camps and, and to... IDP? To, which is internally displaced persons right. camps where uh, people were gathered during the conflict for, to be a safe place. and. You know, sometimes they are, and, and many times they're not. And uh, uh, there are people still there that are being ministered to uh, by Alice's group. Um, also, we're building homes. Alice has, has got a program for rebuilding homes for people that just... Getting them out of those camps and back into the getting community. Getting back into a really solid, uh, good home. Now, we, we've, we've constructed some opportunities for people. Uh, let, let, let's go to that, Dave. You, you t walk us through this. What, what, what is a Seeds of Love ministry kit? Well, I'll let Alice uh, speak to that and the thatched huts. Yeah, you know, always the center is like a transit place for a child, especially for these girls. But we believe that home and a community is the best place for a child to heal. So because we want to build up the community, we want to have a holistic approach and development to the community. So we have to prepare the women from different churches to help and provide counseling and care 
for these girls when we take them back to the family. Because when these girls come to our center, they stay like for one month and we do family reunion. But it's so important that these women the, from different churches, that we, we name them seeds of love because of the love that they have for their own community. So, 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 so this, this $50 then provides what? They provide a home base package, uh, salt, which is so basic, mm -hmm. laundry soap, provide some food, and provide, you know, Bible, provide some basic painkiller. Mm -hmm. When these girls, when right. these uh, women go to the community, kind of a set up they house give it. Package. Yeah. 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 Let's go back to that page. So you, you, there's $50, friends, that you can contribute toward the Seeds of Love Ministry Kit. $250 will uh, actually cover the cost of building a thatched hut. Dave, that surprises me. I, uh, that um, it costs so much. I mean, we're talking about mud and some grass. But we're not building mud and grass. Oh, we're we're nice. building bricks ah. and ah. strong yeah. homes ah. that will withstand the weather and won't deteriorate like the, the, a lot of the oh, that's mud terrific. bricks that you've seen. That's terrific. So, so let's go back again. Uh, $250 for a thatch hut, $500 for agricultural assistance, which is? And, and that's where we are working with uh, Pastor Charles O'Queer in the uh, Lira area. Uh, really equipping, once the families get back to their communities, what we want to do is plow their gardens, give them seeds, give them tools, and, and start to rebuild their lives as far as food. Which and this has already been hugely fruitful. Yeah. Yes, it has. Like that's a sustainability thing, isn't it? It is. Just yeah. rebuilding families yeah. and making them self-sustaining families. Yeah. And of course, uh, wells or boreholes uh, are absolutely critical. Clean drinking water, you just cannot underestimate the importance of that, friends. Right. And and there's still as many uh, wells that can be repaired Cleaning that are up. just basically yeah. uh, pipes out of the ground that have been destroyed, uh, robbed during the conflict, and mm -hmm. there's still many we can repair at a very modest cost, and it can help thousands of people. And then there's always uh, the, the you know the higher capital costs relative to tractors, trucks, and you know there's so you, you got a range there, friends, from fifty dollars to twenty-five thousand uh, dollars. There's the number one triple eight two eight eight zero 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 three.